Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for being here in our discussion. I believe that we have already finished reading the book, so now is the time to share our insights with one another. I am so excited to hear from all of you, but before we start, I am going to give a short introduction of our assigned literature. Our assigned literature is Sophie's World, a 1991 novel by Josa Eingarder. It was written in Bergen, Norway. The story begins when 14-year-old Sophie Amundsen comes home from school to find in her mailbox two notes, with one question on each. Who are you? And where does the world come from? From that irresistible beginning, Sophie becomes obsessed with questions that take her far beyond what she knows of her Norwegian village. Now that we have already given a short introduction of our assigned literature, let us proceed to the giving of insights. Shall we hear from Ricky? Sure. I was intrigued by the fascination that the man had for Sophie. When reading the story, I wonder if he had been watching Sophie grow up from an innocent young girl to a disciplined woman. I felt that he was trying to bring Sophie back into the curious and innocent stages she was once in. I I think he has seen her fall deeper and deeper into the fur of the rabbit and is now trying to pull her back out to the top of the hair with himself and the rest of the philosophers. Sophie was learning about Parmenides, and as I read, it came into my thinking that this man must be extremely ignorant or dumb to think that his senses were false. Maybe he felt that the change was too impossible to acquire, and now I think that this man is ingenious. I was only trying to explain the unexplainable with what he could prove with his mind to be true. And change is not really change. Thank you for that wonderful insight, Ricky. Um, can we hear from one more before we proceed to the next segment of our discussion? I really like this literature because of the fact they are teaching about Western culture. It never hurts to let just a little bit of philosophy into your file to stimulate your mind. So the novel really struck me even as early as a chapter one, especially because I am somehow to relate to Sophie's question of identify of how unsure what kind of adult she's going to grow up to be. I felt like Sophie's thoughtfulness is what kind or what caused to have these philosophical thoughts, even though she she deemed herself to be a stereotypical teenager. Thank you everyone. Now I am certain that you have clearly understood the novel and that you have made such wonderful insights. So the literature is said to be philosophical. Can anyone share his or her thoughts in the discussion? Perhaps um, Aaron? I think that the assigned literature is philosophical because of the teaching of Alberto Knox to Sophie. Not only did he teach about Western culture, but also taught Sophie her most important lessons. One is that a good philosopher never stops asking why. Second, that humans should never lose their sense of wonder. And lastly, philosophy is an ongoing process. For me, Sophie's world is actually helpful to students who have little to no idea about what is philosophy and its relevance to us and the people around us because it tells us the background story of the Western philosophy and how it started and how it became popular and relevant. The book also takes us to Sophie's point of view where our lives are like students who study philosophy and a person who is hungry for knowledge. Sophie's world also talks about conscious of existence because there was a scene in the book where Sophie and Alberto were too late to realize that they were being controlled by Albert Nag in a book. This book discusses our lesson in our class, and we can actually use this as a reviewer. Thank you, everyone. You know what? I agree with all of you. For me, it is philosophical, because the novel itself is a very good survey of the theories that have developed over time. That's why it is recommended for people asking big questions, um, like, who am I? Is there a God? What is the meaning of life? So, I have a question here. How do you see these insights compared to the insights of others in the group? Um, shall we hear from Prince? 
Sure, our insights fit like pieces in a puzzle where we have same thoughts regarding to the book that was assigned to us. I highly agree that the literature we read is really helpful to people who are not into philosophy and people who are new to philosophy because it introduces branches of philosophy and famous philosophers in one book. However, I do think that this book only focuses on the side of Western philosophers. Last but not the least, philosophy may be destructive and we might fall off along the path or, mis or be misguided. But if we continue to pursue it, it will be rewarding at the end. I totally agree on that. Um, before we finish our discussion, do you have any questions in mind? Like uh, some chapters in the book, themes or characters? I'm not quite clear about how Sophie comes into the real world. Would you clarify that, please? Okay, thank you. So, you have to know that she doesn't come into the real world. The major thinks, however, that he is in the real world with full control of Sophie and Alberta's lives, as he is the author, not knowing that he only lives in the imagination of Yos Ein God, who is the second silent author. That's why Sophie, together with Alberto, were able to plot their escape because Major is also a character in the second book, um, The Sophie's World. Okay, so did I answer your question? Okay, so um, more questions? Now that we know Sophie's world is in the Major's mind and the Major's world is in Hostein Gardner's mind, how can we assure ourselves that our world is not in someone else's mind? What a good question you have there. To answer your question, we cannot be assured with that. Perhaps there is a greater being or a god. But if there is one thing that we can be assured of, it's that we live beyond the book we are written in. Just as Sophie and Alberta did in the minds of Hilda and the Major. Um, and this is through our influence or our thoughts in the world. Um, any more questions? Um, okay, since there are no more questions, um, I hope that I have answered your questions well. Um, thank you everyone. This is the end of our discussion.